Hi there, I'm Mike. What I have for you today is Star Wars The Black Series Target exclusive Chewbacca. Go ahead and check out this picture while I read the bio on the back of the box. As if you don't know who Chewbacca is. A mighty Wookiee nearly two centuries old, Chewbacca has fallen upon hard times during this age of the expanding empire. So this is Chewbacca as he appears in the new Solo A Star Wars movie coming out. I don't really want to spend too much time on Chewbacca's backstory because if you don't know what it is now, go watch the movie you're gonna find out because this is the earliest iteration of actually that's not true Chewbacca was in episode 3 anyways just watch the stupid movies just watch them here he is out of packaging this is actually the third Chewbacca released in the Star Wars Black Series line the first one was a phase 2 release back in 2004 14 maybe? The second one was in the first wave of the 2015 Phase 3 release. And they were basically the exact same figure with a little bit different color scheme and different head. But other than that, they were the same, as far as I can tell. It actually took me a long time to talk myself into buying that Phase 3 Chewbacca from The Force Awakens. Because it was so similar from the other one I already had, I felt stupid paying $20 to buy two Chewbaccas. It actually wasn't until the old Han Solo came out that made me want to buy a Chewbacca to go with him. This is actually a very similar situation, but this Chewbacca actually holds his own. Starting off the review with the look, I feel like they did the best they could. It's tough to translate a character like Chewbacca who is 99% hair with eyeballs, toes, and fingers into this. There are some inherent problems that we'll go over, but for the most part, they nailed the look. He looks like Chewbacca. You can't really look at him and mistake him for any other character in the line, unless you just don't know Star Wars. Of the three Chewies I mentioned before, this one's actually the shortest one, and I don't know if that's the case because the other two Chewbaccas were slightly too tall, which they were. I did the math. But who knows, maybe at 190 years old, Chewbacca just wasn't done growing. As far as the colors go, he's definitely the lightest color of all of them. He's more of a golden brown rather than like a dark gray brown that he is in the other releases, and I don't know if that's accurate. I do know with my broken colorblind eyes, he looks a lot brighter than the other two releases. Although with the gradients in his fur, he sort of has like a rainbow effect going on with stripes. I don't know if the actual Chewbacca does that. If he did, let me know in the comments, but that doesn't look quite right to me. But maybe that's just as best as they could translate it, you know, to being 3D. As far as the head sculpt, he looks like Chewbacca. He does have sort of a different kind of hairstyle than the other two releases. This hairstyle is more reminiscent of his Return of the Jedi look, but I guess maybe that look is more reminiscent of his future solo a Star Wars story look seeing that as that takes place previous in the timeline but was released way after. I do think you can make it an easy customization if you wanted to pick up another of these or just the one. The other noticeable difference here is the bandolier. The bandolier is different and it does match his movie counterpart which is what we're going for with the looks. It matches that but it is different from his previous releases and that was obviously the, the first thing I noticed was a different bandolier. That's what made me want the new Chewbacca was a different bandolier. Yes, I've got a problem. I, I get it, okay? Speaking of bandolier, that brings us to his accessories. He comes with one new bandolier. It's removable if you want to. You don't have to. I'm probably not ever going to, but you can. It's sculpted and painted really well. And because of the new design, I guess old design, unlike the previous two releases of Chewbacca, this one doesn't slide off his shoulder like a loose bra strap. I mean, I would I would guess. I would, I would guess. It looks good though. It's got individually molded and painted, I don't know, are those ammo canisters? It's got empty slots, which are a really nice little touch. That's just one of his accessories, if you can count it as one. I am, obviously, here. The next one is his goggles. That's like the biggest difference. Chewbacca comes with goggles. Now, I know he uses them in the movie, and I'm assuming he uses them for a specific reason in the movie, and not that Chewbacca's going through a phase where he just likes to wear goggles. I know I went through a phase like that, and it's something that I don't like to talk about, because it's super embarrassing. The goggles are molded out of a clear plastic that kind of fit over his head, although it looks a little silly to me when they are over his eyes. I do like how they look when they're just resting right above his eyes, though. They're held onto his head by an elastic band that I'm terrified will break. And lastly, we have his gun. And the gun is 
is actually kind of the star of the whole piece here. I really wasn't expecting it. Obviously, my initial reaction was, oh, it's not a bowcaster, which it's fine, I guess. He doesn't have to come with the bowcaster. This gun is actually a super, it's like a shotgun blaster. Uh, I'm sure it's got a name for it, and I'm sure someone out there has already commented down below what the actual blaster name is. I'm not looking it up. It's got a lot of great molded detail in it. It actually has a lot of great paint applications on it as well. But this one actually has articulation. This is actually, as far as I know, the most articulated weapon of any Black Series figure so far. The pump on the barrel moves, so you can get a little cocking action if you want to. It also has this movable, I don't know, is it a handle or something? I do know that it can slide out if you want it to. However, the first time I slid mine out, I noticed that the edge of it had some stress marks where the plastic meets the handle. So I decided that I'm never pretty much ever going to do that again. And I'm going to actually move it as little as possible. Although he can not put it in both hands, it's a little bit of a finagle to get him to actually do that. And that's partially because of his articulation. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Chewie's head doesn't really have any side to side movement. It moves forward, not really at all. It moves back a tiny bit. His arm moves out this far. It does move all the way around. There's a single jointed elbow that is hindered by his molded fur. There's also a swivel at that elbow. His wrist has a swivel as well as a hinge. He has a diaphragm joint mid torso. It moves forward pretty far, back pretty far. His leg moves out this far, surprisingly not hindered much by his molded fur. Back this far, same. Kind of a weak spread. Upper thigh rotation. Single jointed knee. Knee rotation, for some reason. A very slight ankle hinge. And a very slight ankle tilt. With this being Chewie's widest stance, with both his paws, feet, flat on the ground. So there's the articulation. It's probably the worst part of the entire figure. And part of it is because of his sculpting. It's an inherent problem with Chewbacca in general. Unless he's flocked fur, where it's like, you know, real hair or something, that molded plastic is just gonna get in the way and hinder everything. While he is lacking in some areas like the head and the ankles, his legs are okay, especially his thigh area. Even though the fur goes down over his legs, the, the, the molding is soft enough to where it doesn't really hinder it that much, although it does a little bit. I wish his arms got closer to a 90 or greater than 90 degree angle on that bend, but it doesn't because of, again, the sculpting. And the head is just, uh, he's looking straight all the time because that's all he can do. So yeah, the articulation, it's there, like the joints are there. It's just that molding that really hinders it. But I honestly don't know how they could have done it any better. Companies that do real fur like Hot Toys or a 12 inch version, there you can hide those joints with actual fur. It doesn't get in the way. Although you do have maybe the problem of it coming out and it always kind of ends up looking like a plush doll because at that height, fur doesn't hang down properly. Because of his articulation, points and the sculpt has to break in certain areas which gives him a weird layered look like a cake or a burrito. I'm not a fan. It's been a problem for all three of the Chewbacca releases. This one a little bit less so because he's actually missing a point on his mid torso where the other two Chewbaccas have an extra swivel or piece here that allows maybe for more movement. That being said though, the sculpt does look good. There's a lot of detail in here. The fur is really well sculpted. The individual hairs, uh, he looks shaggy, but you know, lovable. I really think that Hasbro did as good of a job as you can really Really get at this scale with what they had to do. I don't think I would have wanted a flock Chewbacca. Don't think it would have worked out that well. And I think over time that would just all fall out and become a bigger issue. Maybe at some point they'll release a real fur Chewbacca once they get the whole fur thing figured out with the Gamorrean guard coming out and the range trooper that just came out. Maybe they'll experiment more. Maybe another two years we'll have a full furred Chewbacca. Right now, I think this is okay. It's not great. It's not perfect, but it is what we have. My other problem is his hands. His hands, the plastic they use and the molding they use, they're sculpted well, but not pliable. That makes it really tough for him to hold his weapon. Once he has it in there, it's good, but getting the weapon in his hands is just super annoying. And that's actually true for all three Chewbacca's released. So what about this figure? Did I even want it? Yeah, pretty much. As soon as I saw 
that first solo trailer, that snippet of Chewbacca was in there and I saw that he had a new bandolier. I thought to myself, I want that. I need that. I need that in my collection. And then once I got the new Han Solo Black Series figure in my hand, I thought, yeah, I definitely need a Chewbacca to go along with this Han Solo figure. I was a little apprehensive when they announced that it was a Target exclusive, but Target tends to be pretty good with exclusives. In fact, after a little bit, their exclusives tend to be peg warmers. I think the last two exclusives they've had, I've seen ample amounts. Its street date, I believe was today, when I recorded this, May 1st. I found it at the fourth or fifth Target I went to. I do know he is exclusive, so he comes in a solidly packed case. So basically, if you see him on the shelf, you're going to see a lot of them because there's eight of him in a box. So I would say if you can't find him just yet, don't fret, he'll be available they'll get more in unless you don't live in America because targets are not a thing outside the US as much I guess so in that case I hope he gets released in your country somehow or I hope you can get him at a reasonable price at least he's not a Walmart exclusive because good luck finding that so if I had to kind of wrap it all up into one score and give it kind of an arbitrary number, let's say out of five, I'd give him a 3.75 out of five. He's good, he's not great. He's got a couple of nitpicks here and there that really kind of bring down his score mostly his articulation, but I think he might actually be my favorite Chewbacca released so far. So say what you want about the Han Solo or the Lando out of this, whether they do or don't look like their characters, Chewbacca is Chewbacca. And while he may not be played by Peter Mayhew anymore because of, you know, medical reasons, he still looks like Chewbacca. And hopefully, he'll have something fun to do in this movie. I'm always a little bit more biased towards Chewbacca though because kind of identify with Chewbacca more than any other character from Star Wars for obvious reasons. And I honestly can't wait to see him on screen. I really hope it's gonna be fun. So that's it for my Chewbacca review. Let me know in the comments downstairs, in the downstairs area, what you thought of it. Was I too nice? Was I too harsh? Did you agree with me? Did you find it? Do you not care? I like to read those. I like to respond. So hit me up. We'll chat or something. There are a couple of ways downstairs also that you can support my channel if you want to. You don't have to. Go ahead and leave me a like, dislike, subscribe, whatever you want to do. Thanks for getting this far. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later. Bye.